Oh, pies in the face, seltzer water sprays, comedic social commentary, and tons and tons of Looney Tune references. That's what I think about when looking back at Tiny Toons, right? Well, I'm betting that's somehow not right. That's right. I, I mean, not right. Whatever. You know what I meant. Right. Scope this out, homie. The first episode of Tiny Toon Adventures was not only a commentary on the process of making a cartoon, it explored all that went into reviving the Looney Tunes brand within it. Really? Sit back as we unpack how Tiny Tiny Toons exposed animation. Let's go back in time. We can just hit rewind. What a terrific notion. It's cartoon commotion. Ooh, we gotta save that for our follow-up episode, Jiggy. You're right, though, this tune did deal with characters in a very personal and emotional way. It totally gave us the feels. But right now, we're gonna zone in on this incredible meta. Hold up, wait, we're talking about social media? I didn't know that meta made... Dude, not Facebook. Meta as in the term meta. Having awareness of oneself, itself. The cartoon knew that it was a cartoon. And it pushed it even further because the first episode was the creation of a cartoon. Their cartoon. I know, I know, Jiggy. It could make your head spin with confusion if you're not careful. But even so, it's a game-changing perspective shift that we didn't know that we needed. Sort of like a love letter to the art of Looney Tunes and also a little bit of satire. Like a mockery or something? Really? Yeah, you could say that it's a joke of itself even. Exposing and criticizing everything that went into the production of the very series that you're watching. This opening first episode of Tiny Toons called out the entire TV animation industry with a fantastic look at how cartoons come together from the point of view of the new kids on the scene. The opening with Bugs Bunny introducing the show isn't really where the story starts. We're transported via flashback to the city offices of Warner Brothers Studios, where an unnamed animator is tasked with creating his own animated series overnight. All because his previous pitch was scrapped by the shadowy figure of the boss. The generic label of the boss is like how any employee would view a figure like that. Someone who makes commands and approves or disapproves, no matter how hard you worked on your project. Now! Get to work! This appointed artist felt like this task was totally hopeless until he got inspiration from the painting of Bugs Bunny on the wall. Can't go wrong with rabbits, Doc. Now, in the story, Bugs literally spoke from the painting. But think about how art from the greats can be inspiring to a work in progress. Being inspired by original classics can help us create something brand new and extraordinary. That's on point, Jiggy. It's both literal and figurative. Long after this, the young stars that were based on Bugs are begging for his help to save their cartoon from a total catastrophe. That's when Bugs steps in and paints the school of Acme Luniversity into the cartoon. A major picture of the greats passing down their experience to the newcomers. Tunes teaching tunes. But it's not just tunes teaching tunes. It's also showing us how the cartoon drew inspiration from the originals. This was the best love letter to the OG Looney Tunes. And it might not have happened if Spielberg didn't direct the series away from the kidification era, like Muppet Babies or a pup named Scooby-Doo and other shows like that. This very well could have been just an average kid version of Looney Tunes, but instead we got tunes inspired by and educated by the greats that came before them. It's so poetically brilliant. Uh, by the way, I'm not counting out the great direction of Tom Ruger and co. They all had a part to play in this masterpiece of meta. Hmm, masterpiece of meta? Rightio, Jiggy. We jumped ahead a little bit. Getting back to the newcomers, before they could call upon the legends for help, they first needed an actual cartoon. And the unnamed animator was tossing them away, thinking his idea wasn't worth any further exploration. But the rabbits he drew weren't gonna let him throw away his career with them. Buster and Babs Bunny took on the task of creating the cartoon themselves. It takes dozens of highly paid network executives years to come up with a TV show. Another hysterical inside joke jab at executives and how difficult they are to work with. How challenging it is to get them to approve things. This time for the mouths of the rabbits themselves. The Totally Boss Bunnies create a world for their series to take place in, Acme Acres. Next up, they needed neighbors and side characters to add a little bit more life to their cartoon. So they held auditions. 
It's really quite funny because they basically brought everyone on the show. This scene is really just to introduce us to Hampton J. Pig and Plucky Duck. Oh yeah, and then there's Go-Go Dodo. He's an interesting character. Hampton, though a neat freak, was clearly inspired by Porky Pig, and Plucky Duck is basically a Daffy Duck clone. Both are great characters, but Go-Go Dodo is something special. He's supposed to be a direct descendant of the original Go-Go Dodo, featured in a single 1938 short, Porky and Wacky Land. The creatives took a world that had largely been underutilized and made it a reoccurring bit within this new cartoon world. It's amazing how much this series drew inspiration from the past and updated it just enough to work within this narrative. Gogo's regular purpose on this series is to act as a surreal timekeeper, jumping out of the cuckoo clock to tell us what time it is and to add to the story's development from a detached perspective. The theme of drawing from the past for this art is all throughout this series as gags and elements are continually recycled from the OG Looney Tunes. Which is why it's easy to see that the team behind this series was in love with their inspiration. Take for example Episode 2, A Quack in the Quarks, an episode that mixed together the universe of Star Wars with the history of Duck Dodgers. It even brought Duck Dodgers ship out of retirement, or out of storage, for the adventure. Even just within this first episode, the world was formed around the theme of reviving the greats, bringing back the tunes of the past for a new life in this production. Revival of the greats isn't all this paints a picture of, though. It also exposes how old or discarded or forgotten ideas can come back with a brand new life. Take Montana Max, for example, better known as the evil Monty, series regular rich kid jerk villain who loves money to the max. It was mentioned at the very beginning of this episode that he was supposed to be the star of his own cartoon. That was the idea that the boss scrapped immediately. No one wants to see a show about some rich little brat named Monty! Wouldn't you know it, Montana Max came back, cause the bunnies needed baddies for their show. So they got the animator's locked box of rejects from a nearby shelf, and Monty was one of the most fearsome foes they unleashed from it. He wanted revenge from the rabbits getting his cartoon and so he stole their scripts and vowed to make it his series. Zone in on this line from Monty. That stupid animator promised me my very own show. Exactamundo, Jiggy Bud. The idea here is that Max was promised a series, but the executive turned it down. And now the animator is practically delivering on his earlier promise by inserting Monty as a series regular bad guy. This revives his concept giving him a new life in a different way. Wait, that means that Max gets what he wants? Mind blown. In a way, yeah, totally, dude. Max sorta did get his own cartoon show, because he does actually get a series. He's just not the star. Tiny Toons peeled back the curtain to reveal the painful struggle of making a cartoon, and it showed us how old ideas can become new again. That right there is the most important thing to take away from this whole story. Old ideas don't have to be forgotten. Classics can be revived. With enough love and respect to everything that made them great, the comedic genius of Looney Tunes can live on. Tiny Toons did this for us. Inspired by the greats, taught by the greats, and by extension, it was really great. Yo, homie, thanks for hanging out with us as always. We couldn't have this show without you, cause you put the commotion in Cartoon Commotion. Oh yeah, that's right, thanks bud. If you're new here, we analyze tunes from the 80s and 90s to find values that you were too busy growing up to notice. Oh yeah, and before I forget, we did have an episode where we explained how there was this one time where Jem won because she lost. A little bit like how Monty got his own cartoon, even though it really wasn't his cartoon. Strangely comparable. 